Okay, hello guys. So, good afternoon. So, today is an Easter Sunday today. Actually, it's about 2.30 p.m. So, I'm thinking about you. Welcome ulit sa kwarto ko. <laughs> guys, at magsasalita na naman ako mag-isa. Kausap ko na naman ang sarili ko. So, today, let's continue our discussion, guys. So, get your notes. Get your dalgona coffee. Tubig lang yun. <clears throat> and let's start our discussion on special collection and point of care testing. And let's just take it one day at a time, guys. Um, so, today, what I'm trying to discuss is, sabihin natin, other tests with regards to mostly blood collection. Yan. So, usually mga tests, ito mga discuss ko ngayon. And point of care testing or bedside testing. Yan. Simulan na natin, guys. So, here in the image, we're going to expect discussion on blood banking. So, an overview on the collection of um, blood when it, when it comes to blood donors. Second photo, it represents um, blood culture tubes, class. So, magkaiba ang tube ng for aerobic organisms, aerobic microorganisms, and um, anaerobic microorganisms. So, I, so let me repeat, ha, it's, these are blood culture tubes. So, there are different specimens to use to culture bacteria. So, pwedeng urine, ganyan, other body fluids. But here, we're going to talk about specifically blood. Yeah. So, these blood culture tubes are used for culture and sensitivity tests. I think I discussed it um, back then. And guys, our favorite tube, our light blue tube for coagulation testing and point of care testing. Actually, marami pa akong test na i-discuss today. Okay, so grab your notes. So, let's begin with the procedures in the blood bank. So, I just want to um, show you. So, once the, the donor, um, we collect... Um, we will collect blood. Um, and what well, other than that, we're going to collect pre preliminary tubes or pilot tubes. So example, ang usually ang mga collect natin, normally a uh, class, lavender and red top. Yan. Actually, pink top is not that well used. Ako ha, nung nag ako sa hospital, pink top hindi masyado. Pero pink top is very valuable in blood bank. Yan. Sa Pilipinas class, hindi masyado doon. Ayan. But I just want you to take note about pink tube. So, ano kaya ang laman? What is the anticoagulant present in your pink tube? So, why are these tubes um, taken? Siyempre, ano bang nagisun yan? So, what are the tests that we do in blood banking? So, blood typing. So, we want to know the um, the blood type of the donor. Kung blood type A, blood type B, blood type O. Of course, Kasi, we will do a cross-matching. So, first one, dapat, it's compatible with the blood type and con compatible with the other antibodies and antigens that are present. So, meron tayong cross-matching. We will assess if um, the blood is um, compatible to the recipient, yung sa magre-receive. So, cross-matching and cross Ito pa, isa pa ginagawa natin, parang ngayon ko yung tababanggitin, screening of bloodborne disease. I want to emphasize, class, that every time you will donate blood, sanya, you will be a blood donor. So, once you will reach 50 kilograms. So, um, aside from aside from testing for your blood type, class, we test this one and it's free. We test for HIV, hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, syphilis, and malaria. One, two, three, four, five. Class, this specific six, uh, um, five, six, five are screened because these are blood bloodborne diseases, meaning it can be transmitted through blood. So, we want to reduce that chance. And so, we assess it. So, usually, itong mga tests na to, we, we need serum specimen. So, we can get from your red top. Yan yun. So, yun na. Huwag niyo kakalimutan niya na. HIV, HBV, HCV, syphilis, malaria. So, HIV, B, and C are virus. Syphilis, bacteria. Malaria, it's a blood parasite. 
And of course, class, it should be adequately labeled. You know, the time of collection is very important. Ha? Time of collection is very important. So, yun. The bottom is initials para alam natin kung sino si Sihen. Okay. So, ito ba kung makalimutan ko yan, ilagay ko sa PowerPoint. Fist pump is allowed in blood donation. So, I'm finding why. Bakit um, I'm searching why. So, I think there are so many reasons to allow adequate blood flow so that blood will be more oxygenated. Ganun. So, we, dito lang, ang, ang, sa blood donation lang ang nagpe-fist pump class. So, um, class in donating blood, number one, it should be, the best is voluntary. Yan, voluntary. So, blood transfusion is a life saving procedure to replace blood components which were lost from either surgery. Yan. So, kunyari, if it's a major surgery, like me, when I had my thyroid um, surgery, hindi naman daw kailangan ng mag-save ng blood unit. But when my lolo, guys, so, he had a hip replacement surgery, hip papalitan yung femur, yung ball ng femur niya, hip replacement surgery, nag-save ako ng dalawang units ng blood para sa kanya. Um, injury class, um, gunshot wound, car injury, diseases, especially with regards to bleeding, anemia, yun, may mali sa hemostasis, kanya. so donor eligibility. So class, choosy tayo. So actually, honestly, not all can donate. Yeah? So they should be healthy. So ages 17 to 66, must weigh at least 50 kilograms. Physical exam, medical history class. So, bawal actually yung mga nagpatatu for the last six months or a year. Bawal class yung mga may history of male-to-male -male, um, intercourse. Ganyan, if you have high risk, mga sexual, mga health worker, um, ano yung sex, community sex workers, hindi sila pwedeng mag-donate. I know, parang Diba, homosexual, hindi naman lahat ng mga homosexuals is um, positive for HIV. Pero parang ganun, may mga ganong issues right na, mga social issues na why we're not, why we are not allowed to wing them to donate, ganyan, because of their, ano nga, inclusivity, ganyan. Pero nga, uh, high risk, pero, ayun na. So, that's, ganun. So, class, we have this couple of terms. Ang may dinagdag ako, allogeneic donation. This is the most common. So, when you will donate, most of the time, it's called allogeneic so do donation. When it is a voluntary donation and it's for uh, someone you don't know, yan, allogeneic donation. So, yun yung tawag doon. So, isa pa, yun yung allogeneic. Kaya, sometimes, baka marinig nyo yung term na allo Allogenic antigens, allogenic antigens, or allogenic antibodies. So, these are antibodies which did not come from you but ca came from other people. So, if you allogenic donation, it came from other people. Yeah. Or it can be given to other people. Yeah. So, if, meron tayo, first at autologous donation, persons donate blood for his own use, yung autologous. So, it's for you. Pag allogeneic, it's for other people. So, kailan to nangyayari? Elective surgery. So, if you want to schedule a surgery, kunyari, um, it's open heart surgery. So, you can donate your blood beforehand. Ganyan. Tapos yun, you can use it during your surgery. But I don't know if this is still um, practiced. Meron tayong cell salvaging class. So, in cases of... Um, Surgeries, so they can salvage, they can reinfuse your blood, and this is so rare. Kaya nilagay ko ngayon ala donation eh. And we have look back program. Alam nyo, one of the advantages of donating blood is they can, as, they can test you for any blood transmissible disease or bloodborne diseases. So if you are positive, sana hindi naman. So when you're positive, they will contact you and let you know. Yeah. So class, since we're here in the realm of um, units, class, I just want to inform you that your blood, 
depende kung saan sila nilagay na blood unit at kung anong anticoagulant ang laman na blood unit na yon. Usually, kung once you will donate for Red Cross, um, ang ginagamit nilang anticoagulant is CPDA1, yan, citrate phosphate dextrose adenine. So, your blood can now reach up to 35 days. Its shelf life, its expiration day is up to 35 days. I think that's commonly used in Red Cross. Yan. So, that's good, di ba? So, the blood can be stored as much as 35 days. Actually naman, mabilis naman ang turnover ng blood. Ibig sabihin, pag may nag-donate sa Red Cross, madali rin nakukuha kasi class, especially in Red Cross Baguio. So, a lot of provinces like La Union is near Baguio. So, pupunta rin sila dito. La Trinidad, kung nakulangan sila nung dugo, ito, ganyan, pupunta sila dito sa Baguio. Kaya, Madalis ma maubos ang blood units natin, especially blood type O. Pero ano yung mga matagal um, kunin? Like blood type AB. Ganyan. Or yung mga O negative. Kasi most of the Filipinos are O positive, A positive, RH positive tayo. So, yung mga negative, matagal kunin yung blood. So, at least mas matagal natin masastore yung mga blood units na ganon. Ayan. So, 35 days. So, class, you know, sobrang vital nitong mga laman nila. Like, citrate, phosphate, dextrose. So, coming from the word citrate, di ba, citrate is an anticoagulant. It chelates calcium. So, it's an anticoagulant. Phosphate. Ayan. Um, if I'm not mistaken, phosphate. Wait, pinicturean ko yun. Phosphate is used to maintain the pH of the blood unit and for dextrose class, it will be the one that will provide glucose as an energy, as a source of ATP for the red cells. Ganon. So, ito, citrate phosphate, double dextrose. So, it has double um, units or dosage of dextrose for the energy of your um, red blood cells. Acid citrate dextrose eto adenine so adenine is also for the production of ATP sodium chloride adenine glucose and mannitol yan so depending kung anong laman ng anticoagulant that will um extend the life um the shelf life of your blood unit galing no class yan garalan niya sa blood bank pag kayo makilala pero i just it's just interesting no na you know, you, para ma-store natin or ma-preserve natin ang red blood cells ng maayos, we need to know its morphology, its metabolism, ganyan. So, since kailangan ng red blood cells ng energy, we need to provide an energy source. So, yun, dextrose. In class, um, did I ever told you that inside the red blood cell, so, piso, um, potassium in, sodium out, so, in cases of um, the red blood cells is actually um, masyado na siyang matagal in storage class. It's lysing and it's releasing so much potassium. So, phosphate is used, is good to add so that the, the pH will not, uh, will not um, be lowered. Okay. And so, paki-add na lang yun, ha? Pero, I just want to let you know that ganun yung ano. So, ang pinakamatagal na, na storage ng blood unit is 42 days in SAGM. Okay, now let's head on to blood cultures. I think ito yung isa sa mga gusto kong um, ina-extract because you need um, loads of amount of blood. Not, not really, but siguro mga 3 ml on each tube ganun, in blood cultures. So, blood cultures class so are acquired in the testing for blood culture and sensitivity testing. So, culture is just part of this testing, culture and sensitivity. So, first off, you need to culture. You need to grow your bacteria. And once you've grown your bacteria, you need to identify it. So, once you have identified it, at least you have an idea what are the best antibiotics. And now, you will assess, dito sa next photo, you will assess which is the most uh, uh, effective antibiotic. So, example, annotate na tayo. 
So guys, um, dito tayo sa first na image. So dito, um, ina-identify nga natin muna yung bacteria. Magpaano ang rami? So yung tawag mo sa mga bilog na yan, yan that's a colony. Yan. So actually, may mga magkakapareho na colony. So you have to describe describe at symmetric lahat kukuha diyan sa colony niyan tapos yun i-identify niya so through biochemical test or if it's automated pwedeng through PCR testing after niya ma-identify yung bacteria class gagawa siya ng sensitivity testing ito na sa second photo so yung naka um, inoculate dito sa culture yung white stuff those are the bacteria class that which were grown in a in, uh, after 24 hours. So, kailangan mo ilagay rin yung mga ano to, antibiotic disc. So, the one which has the largest um, zone of inhibition, yung pinakamalaking butas, yung pinakamalaking diameter, it is the most effective antibiotic. So, yun yung best na ibibigay sa pasyente. Ang galing, no? So, therefore, itong mga antibiotics na to, yung walang zone of inhibition, you shouldn't be giving those to your patient because they are not, clearly not, effective. So, yun yung value nito. Itong blood culture and sensitivity. So, it will determine the presence and extent of infection. So, yun yung iniwasan natin na umabot sa blood. Identify the type of organism and what is the best antibiotic to use and should be ordered based having a condition in which bloodstream invasion is possible and presence of fever. So, kunyari, possibility of septicemia. So, class, we use two types of blood culture in one, blood culture tubes in one patient. So, parehong, uh, depending on the band manufacturer, so, meron tayong aerobic tubes and anaerobic tubes or anaerobic bottles. So, aerobic bottles specializes on isolating aerobic microorganisms. So, microorganisms which loves bacteria, uh, which loves oxygen, aerobic na eh. And anaerobic are the microorganisms which does not love oxygen. They want the absence of oxygen. That's the only way that they can thrive. So, class to maximize the isolation of bacteria. Ako nung intern ako, we draw 60 minutes apart or one hour apart. So you, you draw the first, the bottle in the first hour and second hour yung second bottle to, ma to maximize the isolation of your microorganisms. Pero sabi, sabi ng friend ko, sabi ni Sir Dexter, hindi na daw siya advisable ngayon. Just one in 24 hours. And class, so I just wanted to review that yung ginagamit natin na uh, number one uh, for my microbial um, isolation is sodium, polyanethyl, sulfonate. So its characteristic is anti-complementary. So complementary system, its role is to cure, is for, fog, is for bacterial lysis. And inhibit phagocytosis para hindi kainin ng mga WBCs yung mga bacteria. Um, class, ito, inhibits humoral and cellular elements. Actually, marami. And so, ang isa kasi itong humoral class, um, antibodies, antibody. So, we are trying also to prevent that antibodies will lyse your or neutralize your bacteria. And cellular T-cells, ganyan, complement can inhibit your inter your bacterial growth and, and actually in inactivates certain antibiotics plus meron din tayong pakisulat naman <clears throat> ERD bottle so antibiotic removal device so just in case the patient was already given antibiotic so bibigyan so, yung bottle natin may ARD para tanggalin na yung or inactivate na yung antibiotic yeah. So, class, the most common um, during phlebotomy, the most common error or mistake is microbial contamination, especially in culture and sensitivity. So, pinakamalaga is skin asepsis or antisepsis. So, we can use iodine, chlorhexidine, gluconate. So, do, do a friction rub. 
And class, yun. So, once you place it in your bottle, so, pwede mong incubate yung bacteria for 24 hours. And if I'm not mistaken, yun natin yung ginawa namin. Tapos yun, now you can in inoculate it in your culture. Ganyan, you can use a cotton or a syringe. So, cotton yung mas mang madalas ang ginagamit. So, you have to to inoculate it in a, a growth medium. And class, dito na tayo sa coagulation studies. So, in coagulation studies, we have two important tests. So, APTT and PT activated thromboplastin time. So, it assesses your intrinsic pathway. So, kunyari may deficiency sa factor 12, factor 11, factor 9. So, it will, the time, the time will be prolonged. So, APTT is increased if there is deficiency of any factors that is part of the intrinsic pathway. Prothrombin time it will be prolonged if there is any factors that are missing in um in the extrinsic pathway, specifically factor 7. Factor 7 lang naman ang nasa extrinsic pathway. So, pag, um, pag prolonged ang APTD and PT, it points out that there is a deficiency in the common pathway. So, may, may, may mali sa dito yung common pathway. So, kamukha ko ngayon ko ng common pathway. Okay. So, it starts with 10, 5, 2, yun. Kasi trombin time pag factor 1 deficiency eh. 10, 5, 2. Pwedeng 1. Ayan. Ang, um, ano, uh, common pathway. <coughs> Excuse me. So, class, um, Pag sinabing natin coagulation studies, isn't it that we assess um, with regards to clotting and bleeding, ganon. So, class, um, ito, yung nasa notes nyo nakalagay, a clear or discard tube is used before before extracting, collecting using blue top. So, back then, class back then, kasi hindi na practice to, back then, before um, testing for the, collecting for the blue top, they use a clear tube. Di ba, class, kung walang, walang culture and sensitivity, ang mga una blue top. Um, dati, gumagamit sila ng clear tube. Why? Because there is a tissue factor, tissue factor contaminant. Kasi this tissue factor Kasi once there's um, tissue injury, tissue factor will be released. And tissue factor activates your your secondary hemostasis, your coagulation factor, your specifically your extrinsic pathway, inactivate niya. Kaya sabi nila, mag-clear tube ka muna or discard tube para mawala yung tissue factor. But right now, we don't do that anymore. We collect directly on the light blue top. In class, dapat you have to follow the ratio. Dapat you should exhaust the vacuum well. The ratio should be 9 is to 1. So, 9 um, portions of blood is to 1 portion of anticoagulant. Dapat perfect yung ratio. Or else, pwedeng mag-result to clotting. Ganyan. Or, it can affect your um, results. Oh, short lang pala ng um, coagulation pathway. So now, class, let's um, proceed to the glucose tests. So these are special glucose tests that I want you to know. Di ba, class? Dapat by now, alam nyo na, dapat may random glucose testing, or random blood sugar test, and fasting blood sugar. Yeah. So aside from that, there are actually other tests for evaluating for your glucose. So we have, so I just want you to be um, aware. So two are postprandial um, glucose, two are postprandial glucose. Ang in class ng postprandial is parang a challenge test. Yan. So glucose in diabetics is significantly increased after two uh, Two hours after meal, so you're going. So after giving the patient a glucose drink, na, so that they um in, 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 in
nung mga ka-intern ko yun sa ref ng laboratory. So, you give them a glucose drink and you will test their glucose after the two, the two hour mark. Okay? So, if it's increased, yun, it can be diabetes. And we have this glucose tolerance test. Yeah. So, to assess, same thing, eh, to assess um, when it comes to your diabetes. Yeah. So, the patient should pass for the next 12 hours. Next class, lactose tolerance test. So, parang ano rin. So, if we want to assess how the body um, reacts to lactose, di ba? Actually, maraming patient. Maraming Actually, lactose intolerance is very common. Ibig sabihin, once they have, since they do not have the enzyme lactase, which will break down lactose, so lactose stays in their gut. So, bacteria ang nag, imbis na enzyme ang nag-break down ng lactose, bacteria. And when bacteria breaks down lactose, it tends to be, um, it forms a lot of gas, kaya nauutot sila, ganon, saka nagtatae, when they intake of any cheese or dairy products, ganun. I, I haven't encountered class lactose tolerance test yet. And plus, this one, this is a special test, paternity or parentage testing. So, if you want to know, yan, the alleged father, ganyan, so, mainis so, I cannot even imagine, di ba, na kailangan, na ipates mo na ikaw ang ama nitong anak mo. Di ba mga ganun? But apparently, so, sabi niya, excludes possibility of paternity rather than proves it. Okay. It requires a chain of custody of protocol. Later, I'll discuss what is chain of custody. So, this is a type of documentation. So, actually, chain of custody is mostly important in drug testing. Basta anything that has a legal consequence, kailangan ng chain of custody. Especially when it's an evidence that can be brought to court. So ito, kunyari, may sampahan ng kaso with regards to the um, custody. Ganyan. So, since, it, since the paternity test can be used in court, kailangan may chain of custody. So that to ensure that there was no tampering of the evidence. Ganyan. So, blood samples are preferred, but cheek swabs are increasingly important. Blood sample testing includes blood typing. Yan, basic yan. Class, nilagdagan ko ng human leukocyte antigen. So, parang sa COVID class, we test using uh, PRC polymerase chain, PCR polymerase chain reaction. We assess for DNA. Yan, human leukocyte antigen. Yan. Cannot even imagine how heartbreaking na kailangan mong ipa-paternity pa testing, di ba? Next class, we have therapeutic drug monitoring. You know, class, there um, every drug has its um, maximum concentration or it has a concentration where it's very effective. Yan, may concentration siya. Kung, so, kung sumuba ka na ng concentration ng drug na yon, it can lead to um, side effects or it can be ineffective. So, it's very crucial that we we should um, establish the perfect drug dosage. Yan. So, sobrang it, this, this shows class that medtechs, pharmacies, and doctors should be working together. Diba? It should be a team. Hindi, ano, Hindi lang, hindi lang sila ang medic na sa lab lang, ang pharmacist na sa pharmacy lang, ang doctor sila lang yung nasa bedside ng pasyente. They should be working together because you, the medic should ask the the pharmacist and the doctor and, and the other way around. So, ano ba yung mga drugs na kailangan i-monitor natin? Warfarin. So, this is an oral anticoagulant or kumadin. Digoxin is for the heart class. Lithium. Pang ano to eh. Pang psychosis. Pang bipolar. Ganun. So, ano kanong class? Anti-epileptics. Anti-depressant. So, to prevent the toxicity of drugs and we want to make sure that they're very effective is we have to do therapeutic drug monitoring. Ganyan. Sobrang halaga ng mga may tech ng mga pharmacists. Ganyan.
So, example, yung mga tinatanong ko yung may may class may so I want to be very sensitive. Actually, may mga may sulan, mga sulan daw class nila malapit, ma parang I I cannot go to school because I'm drinking this drug, ganun. So, uh, syempre ako no alam naman ako pakaila mera. So, kana kamusta ka dun sa drugs na yun? So, usually people who are taking antidepressants, yan mga lithium class, it can make them foggy, yung ganun. Parang parang makes you numb parang ganoon na rin so ganoon marami siyang eff- masab- marami siyang side effect so the best na ano sana may TDM tayo to ano to really monitor these types of patients and class so if kung meron tayong therapeutic drug monitoring meron tayong therapy therapeutic phlebotomy or therapeutic bleeding. So, people who have polycythemia and hemochromatosis are are um, are subjected to therapeutic bleeding. So, paano to, class? So, we bleed them. So, ganon. So, para silang magdodonate ng blood, but class, we don't transfuse their blood to the patient because abnormal yung hematocrit nila eh. Pwedeng masyadong mataas. It, when it can, when it comes to polycythemia. So, class, ang opposite ng anemia is polycythemia. So, actually, polycythemia is pancytopenia, meaning all your blood cells are increased, but especially your red blood cells. And so, to manage the high hematocrit and hemoglobin, we need to um, bleed the, the patient. And class, ito naman, hemochromatosis. So, hemochromatosis is when the patient has high iron. Man, iron in the circulation, iron in the storage. So, ang pangalan ng ang tawag sa iron in the storage form, class, is peritin. So, masyadong mataas na yung iron. And too much iron in your, in your body, class, is harmful. Yan. So, yan, we bleed them. So, ladies, kung wala kayong symptoms of being anemic, huwag kayong mag-take ng iron supplement. Class, please, wag, wag inom ng inom ng supplement unless it's recommended by the doctor, okay? So, class, dito na tayo sa toxicology specimens. Yan. So, toxicology is the study of toxins or poison. So, first off, we have forensic blood alcohol specimens. Yan, class. So, there are so much, so many reasons why we test for um, alcohol in blood. So, ito yung lagi kong image dito. It is a breath analyzer. So, ito yung mga mga police merong ganito to see if someone is driving under the influence of alcohol. So, yun yung, so, ang specimen dyan, breath. Yan. Pero, syempre, ang specialty natin, dapat sa blood, di ba? So, class, ayan, we need to assess the blood alcohol levels because very high um, blood alcohol levels can lead to comatose to death. Ganyan. And sometimes, class, sabi niya, it can be ordered by a physician or connection on the on the, on the the job injury. So, may naaksidente sa, sabi natin, sa factory. Perhaps dahil sa alcohol, ha? employee insurance programs, and employee drug screening. So, aside from assessing um, drug levels, pati ethanol levels, yan. sabi niya, dito na yun, skin preparation, don't use alcohol-based um, disinfectants. So, either use iodine or chlorhexidine. The specimen requirements is a great top tube. Yan. So, class, ethanol is the the edible type of alcohol. Methanol, nakakalason yun, ha? Kaya yung mga naririn yung may lambanog poisoning, instead of ethanol yung natimpla nila, siguro methanol yung natimpla nila. Eth- methanol is a wood alcohol, if I'm not mistaken. So, now, class, we have drug screening. is sa mga paborito ko. Class, alam nyo ba sa drug screening? I actually train for drug screening. Mga, ang binayara ko doon, mga 9,000, which is never ko nagamit. Kaya, class, isa sa mga advice ko sa inyo, huwag train ng train ng kung ano pagka-graduate. 
I mean, unless you're going to use it because as of now, I haven't used my training on being a drug analyst yet. So, classmate, I was training on being a drug analyst. So, you have to be careful with your um, patient because same thing, may chain of custody dito. Sabi niya, chain of custody is the chronological documentation or paper trail that records the sequence of custody, control, transfer, analysis, and disposition of physical and electronic evidence. So, class, the urine and the results of our drug screening can be used as an evidence in, in, uh, in the court. And to ensure that um, there was no tampering in the... There was no tampering with your... Um, specimen, um, there should be a chain of custody. Ibig sabihin, um, anyone, who, anyone who received the, the urine specimen should be well documented. Yan, kung sino nakareceive. Yan. So, class, what are the usual, the usual specimen that we use in drug screening is urine. So, nasa urine na tayo. And, class, the, um, the hair, class, the hair actually is a good test for drugs as well because the the urine um the the hair class can 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 assess the levels of drugs which has happened for a very long time siguro yung parang mga yung mga prolonged use na, na nasa hair na ganun kasi pag urine class you can still um it has a metabolic cycle. Drugs has metabolic cycle in our body wherein we can wash it out at some point. So, ganun, may limit rin siya sa urine. Pag late mo na nakuha, pwede siyang mag-negative. So, yun, mas reliable ang hair. Kasi we don't do that here in the Philippines. Eh. So, class, we test two um, analytes, urine analytes in the urine. We have methamphetamine for shabu, and tetrahydrocannabinol for marijuana. So, unfortunately, yun lang yung tinetest natin madalas. Yan. So, at ang isa pang unfortunate dito, class, alam nyo ba to? Itong met at saka THC o tetrahydrocannabinol, ito ay yung mga drugs ng mahirap. So, ang mga hinuhuli lang natin ng mga drug addict is mga mahirap na drug addict. Do you get it? Kasi class, kung gusto natin makuha ng mga mayaman na drug addict, hindi naman ito yung tinitira nila class eh. Cocaine naman, diba? LSD, ganyan. And unfortunately, we don't test for those, so we cannot touch them. Ayun. So usually class, we get a random urine sample. Alam nyo naman, nung nag-training ako, kailangan yung kapkapan yung pasyente, ganyan. Because they may be carrying any any urine, ganun, or any drugs which can neutralize their urine or tamper their urine. So, class, itong nakanap ako ng stick sa Google. So, it, they, it assesses cocaine, opioids, methamphetamine, amphetamine, tetrahydrocannabinol, and BZO. Hindi ko alam ko ano yung BZO. So, Actually naman, FDA ang nag approve ng mga testing kits natin. So, dapat ang FDA mag-approve pa siya ng iba pang ano, um, diagnostic method. Nakapapatay-patay naman itong FDA na to. So, yan. Drug test cups. Meron rin ganyan. So, class, patient preparation. Naku, ang haba. So, when nagpa-test kami ng drug test when I was an intern. So, bago ako mag-internship class, itatest ka for drug screening. So, explain that test and purpose or procedure advise the patient of his or her legal rights. So, you have to be honest na, that you are taking drugs, ganyan. If not, at nahuna nila sa urine test mo, I think kailang ka magpa-rehab. You cannot makukulong agad, but you need to be rehab. At saka class, that we have a national database for drug testing, ganyan. So, hindi ka kahit mag... So, your um, drug results will be available to all laboratories and medics. So, ganun. Hindi ka nila itetest hanggang meron yung pangalan mo sa... Hanggang naka-mark naka yung pangalan mo sa database. 
So special specimen collection requirements, special area for, we have a special area for urine collection. So the area of your urine collection class, sh there shouldn't be no flowing water. So yung toilet bowl, dapat may blue coloring on the water of the toilet bowl, walang source of water para hindi nila matamper yung urine nila. Proctor will be present at the time of collection. So they have to watch you urinate. Split sample may require less the minimum volume of urine could be as high as 60 ml para pwede nilang ulitin. <coughs> yeah, and specimen must be labeled, will be sealed, then it should be signed, it should be kept kasi nga it can be used as an evidence in the court. Nakwento ano ba yun, class? Uh, yung may doctor class that apparently this doctor was positive to drugs, I think amphetamine or not amphetamine, ko alam. Tapos class, she was she kept she kept on denying it up and it led to um the court. So she claimed that she was um that she was positive for drug for this type of drug because of the diet pill that she was taken. I, Plus, take note, doctor siya ha, positive siya sa drug testing. Tapos, ang sabi niya, due to the diet pill that she was taking, um, class, you won't be positive on the drug screening test if you are, if it happened, if, if you just, ha, you just accidentally taken something, ganun, hindi tataas yung level mo ng drug, le, ng drug, sa, it won't, it, it won't be positive in the drug testing if you just took it because it's an accident, ganon. But note, her urine levels was high, ganon, kasi nag-positive siya sa screening test. So, mataas yung ano, levels niya ng amphetamine. So, therefore, she was just not taking it um, uh, recreationally. So, it, she's not taking it for fun. The, she's taking it regularly because the levels are high. Ganon, parang rin kay Rabena. Positive siya sa drug testing, tapos sinisi niya lang rin sa mga energy drink. Uh, Awan ko, sinacharot-charot lang naman talaga ako eh. Ba? So, hindi ka magpa-positive plus sa drug testing if you just take it recreationally. Mm. Hmm. Now, let's go to trace elements. So, it is the test for aluminum, arsenic, copper, lead, iron, and zinc trace elements. So, yan, um, heavy metal poisoning. So, class, the tubes here are royal blue. And class, din na tayo sa last na part ng ano natin, point of care testing. I, I noticed that point of care testing or bedside testing is very common in your syllabus sa curriculum niya, guys. Like, because this is where the technology is heading eh. Um, we're in, now we test near, beside the patient or remote of the laboratory, outside the laboratory or far from the laboratory. Ganyan. Because right now, we can use our mobile device. Natawa ako dito, meron dun, semen sample. Disposable smartphone-based device. So, pwede ka na mag-test ng semen sample. And you know, we have these handheld devices that we can bring beside the patient. So, yan ang technology ngayon. So, POCT or point of care testing is an analysis that employs an analytical method and is used in diagnostic setting that is remote from a centralized laboratory facility. I think this is a very good thing that's happening. But class, we will discuss the limitations of this one. So, sabi niya, class, it offers convenience to the patient in short turn around time. So, there's a short period of time wherein the patient within seconds, can they can have their results. So, yung mga doctor, hindi na kailangan kulitin yung mga medic na sa may mga result ko, ganyan. So, the lab testing is given beside the patient. So, point of care testing or near, near, near side testing or bedside testing. Ganyan. So, these devices are now portable. Requires, but still, the challenge is we need to maintain our quality control and maintenance. So, 
to so that our results will still be accurate. So yung challenge dito, how will we maintain its quality? Yan. And we should, we must, and it's safety. So meron tayong terms na andyan sa notes nyo. We have wave testing and non-wave testing. So there are POCT testings which are simple tests or low risk for an incorrect result. So those are wave testing. Non-wave testing class are complex. Oh ma'am, ba't mo naman sinasabi sa amin to? So for non-wave testing class, it's very important that the med techs should follow the the manufacturer's recommendation, ganyan. Kasi nga, it's the, the test is quite complex and it is very prone to error. What else, class? Daily external liquid quality control. So, kailangan pa rin na, sin, na kailangan kina quality control, yung mga reagents, yung mga chips na ginagamit. And class, you we disinfect it with 10% bleach. Um, so class, here are the examples of the different tests under point of care testing. So ito, pwede na tayong magcoagulation test. So people who are taking oral. So pag oral, warfarin or pumadin. Pag IV, anticoagulant, intravenous, heparin. Ayan. So we can now assess it using these handheld devices. So ipapit mo na lang. Ayan. So ma'am, sabi mo last time, capillary test, ano? Um, hindi pwede yung gabitin yung pagkawagulation test. Unless, if if you have a point of care testing, pwede ng capillary test. Yan. Depende class kung anong manufacturer's recommendation sa kap, sa coagulation, sa analyzer ha. So, baka ang i-require na pa rin is blue top. Ayan. So, um, Physician's office testing ata ang other name ng point of care testing. So class A, ah, gusto ko sabihin dito, ayan, to monitor the patients on blood thinners or blood anticoagulants. So kung napapasobra na pala yung mga anticoagulants natin, pwede natin i-reverse. Yeah. So if it's kuma din um, and they are giving excess kuma din already, we can give more vitamin K. Ayan. Kasi warfarin um, attacks um, vitamin K-dependent coagulation factors. Pag heparin, masyado maraming heparin, bigyan natin ng protamine sulfate. Ito yung mga example ng mga POC instruments with regards to coagulation testing. Hindi na ko lang i-memorize na. And class, what else? Ito, madali lang to gawin. Bleeding time. It is an assessment of primary hemostasis. Class, the main actors for primary hemostasis is your blood vessels and your platelets. So to assess if there's something wrong with your blood vessels or your platelets, we perform bleeding time. So the equipment for bleeding time is number one, a sphygmomanometer. Number two, a timer. Number three, a lancet and a paper. Yan. So, apat lang dali, dali mo, pwede ka nang gumawa ng bleeding time. Kasi alam nyo, uso pa rin itong bleeding time sa mga dentists. Yan. Nagpapa, pinapatest nila yung bleeding time ng pasyente bagong mag pabunot. If not pabunot, parot canal. Yan. So, what we do is, sabi niya, place the puncture device firmly on the lateral aspect of the forearm. Or in, para specific class, itong siko ko, Yan, dito. Volar surface of the lateral arm. Yan, dito. So, we will make three incisions. Tut, tut, tut. Yan. Tapos, we will start the timer. Tapos, we will blot, blot the, the blood every 30 seconds. So, the time that the, there will be no blood, wala nang blood drops on the filter paper. So, that will the, ano, so, we have to stop the timer already. So, the normal value is 2 to 7 minutes. So, dapat by the by the 7th minute, dapat wala nang nagbe-bleed. So, actually, this can be very imprecise. Siyempre, depende sa laki ng puncture mo, ganyan. But, in 
it's still used class for assessing primary most cases. So the normal value is two to seven minutes. So anything more than that, there's something wrong with your primary hemostasis. Plus, review lang ah, primary hemostasis, <clears throat> di ba? It's your blood vessel and your platelets. Your secondary hemostasis are your coagulation factors. So for assessing your coagulation factors, ang best is PT and APPT. Pag primary hemostasis, maganda ang blood, bleeding time, maganda ang platelet count. Ito class, ito yung pinili ko sa arterial blood gases because when I was working in the hospital, ito yung, ano, ito yung ginagamit namin. Sobrang dali lang to class. So you have to extract arterial blood and if it's not, if you have to transport it, you need to place it in ice. If not, yun na, lagay mo na yun. Tapos yun, arterial blood, idiretso mo na dito sa may chip na to, tapos ipasok mo sa may machine. Tapos it will release the results on pH, partial pressure of carbon dioxide, partial pressure of oxygen, yun. By carbonate, saturated oxygen, pH, class, arterial blood gases. Chemistry, class, ang lalit na ng mga makin na ngayon. Ayan. So, electrolytes. Class, alam nyo ba, yun, electrolytes, very important sa mga, ano, mga dehydrated patient, misa ng baby. Ito ba? So, now, so, multiple test panel monitoring. So, social tong POCT na to if it contains all blood gases, electrolytes, hemoglobin. And finally, class, so I chose, so we, so in your notes, I think there's a whole list of the different tests for point of care testing, but I just want to underline this one. So cardiac troponin T and troponin I, class troponin T and troponin I, dapat pag narinig nyo na yun, cardiac, so it points out to the heart. So, these are very good signs if myocardial infarction happens or heart attack happens. So, at least, di ba, dapat mabilisan pag myocardial infarction. So, if you have a point of care testing for this test, then you can see if the patient just had a heart attack. Diba? Ito, HbA1c. Ito, para makadetect ng mga patients na pasaway. So, this test is used to test if um, to evaluate if the patient is um, adhering to the therapy. So, ibig sabi in class, it can monitor your diabetes level for the last two to three months. It's BA1C na ko. Sobrang gandang test na to. So, it can assess. Kung hindi ka nagpasag ng two to three months, pag nagpa-HBA1C, mala alam ng doktor kung nag-adhere ka sa diet, sa therapy, ganyan. So, if it's increased, yan. So, you are still diabetic, ganyan. Pero, pag it's decreased, um, your diabetes is under control. Yan. So, yan. HPA1C. So, class, beds, bedside testing or point of care testing is so important kasi nga, ayun. It is, can be accessed through mobile, but however, we need to assess its quality as well. We have to monitor diba? its quality. Pinaka-common class na point of care testing is glucose testing, especially on diabetic patients. Yan. So, this is the end of Unit, T, unit 8 class. I'll see you again next time. So, bye-bye. Have a great day. Happy Easter. I'm thinking about you. I'm praying about you. Bye-bye.